Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my episodes. Now on this one, we're going to be doing the installation for Project 99, or 1999 I should say, uh, or P99 or P1999 is uh, what most people know it for. Uh, blue would be for player versus uh, environment, uh, and red would be for uh, player versus player. Now to install this game, you're going to need a copy of EverQuest Titanium. Uh, it's something they came out with later on that allows you to have, I believe, uh, 10 expansions with the game. Uh, I didn't have this one because I was actually playing when the game was coming out, so I would buy each expansion separately, uh, so I had to go back and buy this one. Uh, it's not too much. You can find it on eBay for around 20 bucks, sometimes even less. Uh, I like to have a really nice copy, you know, the box all in good shape and everything like that, so I paid around 20 bucks. Uh, some people were out there just selling the disc. Uh, you know, you can get that for a few bucks. Uh, for the installation, you want to go ahead and install that. The thing I found, though, is it's best to install it into a folder that it doesn't specify. Uh, I named mine uh, uh, emu.99 or project 1999, basically, uh, and installed it in there. That way I wouldn't get it confused with uh, the Sony EverQuest game that I have on my computer as well, because I, I still play that one. Uh, there you go right here, you install it into a fresh directory. You may run into issues depending on your version of Windows. Uh, let's see, move down. Okay, what you want to do is install this folder right here, this file right here. You're going to have to download it. It's Project 1999 Files, version uh, 33 right now. It's uh, the end of uh, 19 or 2014. Let's see, go into, I believe it's in here. No, that's the wrong folder. It's this one. So it is, no, not that one. It is this one right here. This is the file you're going to get. You're going to unzip it, and it's going to show you these folders and files right here. What you're going to do is copy that into wherever you created your game. Uh, my game is right here under EMU EverQuest. Uh, you will just copy it straight in here. You don't have to go into any of the folders. And you want to override any of the f uh, files that it says you're going to need uh, to confirm that like three times if you have uh, your administrative view on. Uh, and just say yes. Then, once that is done with, you're going to want to come in here and find these five files right here in that same folder. And you're going to want to delete each one of them. Now, the easiest way to do that is to simply select one, uh, copy it, and then go down to whatever folder you have. Uh, put your game into and click right here at the top and say uh, like this one right here is still there. It's going to search for it. It's not going to find anything because I've already deleted it. Uh, you can just delete it right there uh, and then go and do the other th uh, four that they have. Very simple, not too complicated at all. Uh, once you're done with that, you're going to have to create a form account. Uh, you come in here and you create a username, a password, confirm your password, email, confirm your email. Uh, and then it's going to ask you a random question. This one happens to be what was the maximum player level in classic EverQuest No Expansions. Uh, and that was level 50. Uh, and then it says if you referred to this site by an existing member and then it wants to know who it was. I don't know if you get anything for doing that. Uh, you're welcome to put me down if you want. Uh, and I'll show you what my character's name is later on. I think it's going to be Villos or Demiro. Uh, but you're, you're welcome to do that. If not, it's not that big of a deal. You can set uh, your time zone. Uh, in the game, you'll actually get in-game time, which is the time of the game, uh, the world that's going around in Norath, and you'll also see the time of your actual time. So it's a nice to put this on here, so that way you don't have to keep checking your clock. It's just right there on the screen. You can see it anytime you, you feel like it. Um, you can click on this little button down here on the bottom, receive emails from administrative. Now, normally I don't do this, simply because most uh, companies take advantage of it and they send you all this junk mail every time a new game's coming out. Hey, check out this, check out this, buy this expansion, do this. Uh, and if I'm interested in the game, I usually keep up with that far in advance to anything they're going to send me in a game er, in an email. Uh, but in this one, I, I went ahead and left it on, simply for the fact that this is an emulator, so if any issues arise, or if they're planning on doing something new, like say introducing an expansion, or maybe uh, thinking about uh, stopping expansions and just keeping the game the way it is, uh, they may send out mass emails and say, hey, what's your opinion on it? Should we do it? Or, hey, this is what we're going to be doing, just letting you know uh, before it happens. So this could be uh, something nice to have, but again, it's your uh, decision on whether you want that. Once you complete restoration or registration, uh, you should get an email. You might want to check your junk folder. Mine was in there uh, saying that you need to confirm and 
your email is, is real and everything like that. Of course, if you don't want to give them a real email, you can use Mailinator. Those of you who have never used Mailinator, very simple. You just create a, a fake email, say like uh, johnsmith at mailinator.com. And then you go to the website Mailinator, type in John Smith, uh, and you can log on to the, the email with no password. Everybody else can log on to the same one with no password. Uh, so you want to make sure that once you're done with that, you delete your email, uh, any you know messages you've gotten in that account, uh, and that you change your username and password if at all possible because, again, anybody can get into those accounts. Uh, they're just open for anybody to see. Uh, some sites don't allow you to use Mailinator because they've caught on and they know exactly what it is, uh, but on this one it doesn't. So uh, you can use it all you want. Once you've logged in, you're going to have to create another username and password for the actual EverQuest. This is just for the forms to get you in. Uh, you're going to need to create another one. That one takes a few seconds. It's not that hard to do. Now, once I've done installing, I actually had a couple issues uh, with running uh, Titanium. Now, if you come down here, you'll see once you've done your form, you're ready to play. All you need to do is go to Launch Titanium, uh, click on that, and launch. Now, it wasn't that easy for me. Uh, it says also, don't ever click on EverQuest EXE. This will take you to the Sony uh, website uh, servers, which will you know patch the game. And then basically, because it's such an old uh, disk, it's going to tell you, hey, you need to download the new client, which is uh, the launch pad. And you'll have to download the whole game all over again. And it will take you to Sony. It won't take you to uh, Project 1999. So don't ever click on that if you want to play Project 1999. What you want to use is this right here. Now this didn't work for me and I'll show you what I use later on to fix that if you have that same issue. Uh, you can also install this right here. This fixed some issues with the CPU, uh, crashing problem, frame rate, and uh, other things like that. You can also get the uh, Valicious uh, UI, which I'll show you how to install that. I did that. I like the way it looks. Uh, it's a little bit more user friendly than the uh, original one. It allows you to really customize your screen, especially since I'm doing these videos for you guys. I want to be able to show you as much of the picture as possible. And the old one, uh, the old UI, takes up a lot of the screen and it's kind of blocky, which I like the look of, uh, but it's not really made uh, for showing you guys a lot of the footage. A lot of the, the screen is gone. So I went ahead and uh, downloaded that for me. You can also, if you like the old uh, songs, Loading, Death, and Combat, you want to go ahead and cut these uh, four files right here out and put into another folder. Uh, in case you ever want to put them back in. Uh, it shows you right there. That's what it's telling you to do. Now, if you've done all of this, you went ahead and installed everything, you cut and paste, did everything that I told you to do, everything that it's told you here, and you go down and try stalling the game or try running the game, and it didn't work, uh, you want to come over to this page right here, and I'll put it down in the details as well. Now, this guy has put the top 15 uh, problems that people constantly run into. It's very nice that they put this in here. Uh, and it, it works for me. What I had a problem doing is uh, logging into the game. So I tried this right here using uh, eqgame.exe. Now you want to create a shortcut. Now all you got to do is go into your folder where you have the game, right click on it, uh, and say create shortcut. It's going to be right here in a little menu somewhere. Uh, then send that to desktop uh, if you have the choice. If not, I just cut and paste it onto my desktop for my shortcut. Now once you're done with that, you want to right click on it and go into your properties for that shortcut. So if we minimize this, you'll see it right here. You just go into properties. Now you want to make sure this right here, this little tag all the way across, is exactly as he specifies this right here. Your EQ folder extension, so wherever you put the game, mine happens to be in program files, and then I name my folder, whatever. Uh, and then slash eqgames.exe, uh, and then the patch me. You want to make sure those little double lines are there as well. Mine didn't have the patch me, so I had to add that on there. I just went ahead and copied uh, straight from the double line to make sure the spaces and everything was uh, you know, perfect. Copy that, put it in here, pasted it. Uh, then he also wants you to do a few other things. Uh, let's go down, patch me is required. Let's see, it says make sure you're running in compatibility mode. So what you want to do is go over to compatibility mode. Mine was already set to Windows XP but for Service Pack 3, so I went ahead and set it to Service Pack 2. And then I had to click down here to run uh, this program as administrator. And then you just click Apply, and you're done. Uh, and then it says, uh, lastly, before you be sure to check your EQ host text folder or text file. Now this is found in your uh, EQ folder. In fact, I'll go over here and show you where it is. Copy it real quick. 
Okay, maybe not real quick, but I'll copy it for you guys. Uh, it's already there. And there it is right there. You just double click on it. You just need the notepad. It opens up. And this is what you want it to say right here. You want to make sure everything here is what yours says. If it's not, if there's anything else, another dot down here, another paragraph, anything, you want to go ahead and delete that. This is all you want it to say. And if it says that, then when you click on the game, it should open up just fine and run, and uh, you won't have any issues. Now, before I stop it there, I'm going to show you how to install the... Uh... Oh, did I close that? I sure did, didn't I? I'm an idiot. Okay, so I'll go down there and find it real quick for you guys. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Program files. There it is right there. So you want to come into here and you want to find your UI file folder right here. Double click on it and you should only have this one and this one. You won't have this one. So you want to do is create another folder. Say new folder. It's going to add it. You want to name it Valicious. Now, I don't need this one because I already have uh, Valicious on there. You can name it whatever you want. If you download a skin uh, that's a custom from somebody else that works, uh, name it whatever you you really want to. It doesn't really matter uh, all that much what you name it as long as you remember what the name of the folder you created. Now, if you download the Valicious folder or Valicious file from uh, Project 1999 and it shows you... Go ahead and... It shows you right here where you can download it. You click on it and it will literally come down here in a little bar that says would you like to download this, yes or no. And you save it and open it up. Uh, then it wants you to extract it. Now I've already extracted it. You can see these are all the files right here. There's an ungodly amount of files. Uh, you want to copy everything but the original zip folder uh, and paste it into your Valicious folder. And there it is right there. It's pretty simple, not very hard at all. Now once you get into the game you want to use this right here forward slash load skin and the name of your folder if you named it uh, you know honky honky tonk you want to do lo uh, forward slash load skin honky tonk whatever you named your folder uh, word for word letter by letter is what you want to load skin and then followed by so very easy to do you can have multiple skins uh, saved into that uh, different folders and you can switch back and forth just simply by doing forward slash load skin very easy uh, not hard at all. Again, guys, if you like these videos, uh, you feel like joining me on Project 99, or 1999, you're welcome to. I would love uh, to see you guys there. And again, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to uh, hit the sus uh, subscribe button.